Wilson Gift Fit on three. One, two, three. Wilson Gift Fit! The Wilson Middle School Get Fit Get Club is comprised of 7th and 8th graders who are very interested in getting fit. We serve about 30 and 35 kids each week. We work on our muscular endurance. We work on our increasing our fitness levels. It's goal oriented. They do a series of circuit training, increasing their cardiovascular endurance using the speed ladder, mini hurdles, and we do calisthenics push-ups sit-ups and we do it with much enthusiasm Hello, let's get it. and the all-encompassing event is the kicks for kids 5k in Covington Kentucky right now we're training to for 5k run we're getting conditioned hopefully we come first and our students will be running and walking uh, 3.1 miles and it will be most of their first 5k complete with a medal and they've been increasing their cardiovascular endurance throughout the whole year uh, to complete this race, and we are very, very excited. We purchased for our Get Fit Club. We have t-shirts that we use as incentives. After their fourth visit um, to Get Fit, they got a t-shirt that they could wear proudly. We have 12 dodgeballs, not the violent dodgeballs, the actual Nerf dodgeballs so no one gets hurt. Um, we, we have dodgeball every fourth Tuesday of the month, and we usually have 30 to 40 kids show up that day. Thank you, Mr. Wilkes. Thank you, Hamilton Community Foundation. This program is a need, and we are very appreciative to Mr. Wilkes and the Hamilton Community Foundation. It's called Get Fit Club, so you gotta get fit. With the, the grant, I was able to buy things that I could enhance their math, their science, the technology with the computer, the engineering, so they understand things. They have to work hard, and it's my job to give them those skills. With my little guys, I have to go over this. The more I can give them now, at this young age, the, the better equipped they are to, to be good adults. Some of the materials were science that we went over, the, like the coral reef, where we took the magnifying glass and we looked at the things that would be in the sea, all kinds of math things that my kids love to count that stuff. When I get the boxes out with math counters to them, they'd rather do that than, than play with games. They love to count, they love to sort, separate, they love to look at the pictures and the cards. I can't give them enough information, they just absorb it and love it so much. So the materials now are wonderful for holding their attention. Over the years, with the Wilkes Grants and the Educator of the Year, I have been able to provide so much for my kids. So much of these materials are so expensive that it just would have been out of my grasp. You walk in that room and everything that's good in that room came from the money that I received from the Hamilton Community Foundation and the generosity of Mr. Wilkes. I always tell everybody we don't have the green room, we have the Wilkes room. Thank you seems so small compared to all of the things that we have gained and all of the things that I've been able to provide to my students through his generosity and the hard, dedicated work of the Hamilton Community Foundation. How I came up with the idea for the Chains and Charm program was Every quarter we recognize students by giving them an award. We wanted something to remind the students of their goals on a more regular basis. The Chains and Charms program has allowed us to do that because every week then the kids get to wear their chains with all their charms that shows what awards that they've gotten throughout the year. So it's a great motivator for the kids to keep them focused on what their goals are. And it's incentive for other people. They look at some of the, there are some kids who have a ton of charms and they look at them and think you know what if they can do it I can do it and it's it's motivation for the rest of the kids data is so important and we have data that shows that our disciplinary referrals from last year to this year have decreased exponentially 
from what they were the year before. And I really think it has a lot to do with the fact that we have the chain, chains and charms. They just have that sense of pride. The new building, the new Riverview, it's not Harrison, it's not Jefferson, it's not Pierce, it's not, it's one new school, one new family, Riverview. When we have the quarterly awards assembly, which we still do, which are great events, and we're able to bring outside, uh, you know, friends, family, community members in, to see the kids get their awards. And they keep track of how many awards that they've gotten, how many charms that they have on their chains. It's been one of those programs that I wish I would have done it years ago because I think it's just a real inspiration for the kids. I'd like to thank the Hamilton Community Foundation and the Harry T. Wilkes Hamilton Celebrates Education Grant uh, for making Chains and Charms a reality at Riverview. Uh, we are definitely the crowning jewels of the Hamilton City Schools, and now we have the bling to show it. Well, I learned about Touch Math in college, and I thought, wow, that's a really great way to learn math, especially for kids with learning problems, because it's very concrete. They can just use the touch points that they've learned on the numbers. And the materials can really be used across the whole school. It's been proven to be effective. Number one through nine has touch points. So like number one will have one touch point, two has two points on it, et cetera. And the kids use those points to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Next year I'm looking forward to being more of a liaison to help teachers get it started in their rooms, especially at the kindergarten level, because if you start there, then um, you won't have to reteach it and they'll, students will get that fluency as they go up through the um, years in school. Kids use it and it's so exciting when you see them using touch points because it's so much more efficient. And it's like, yes, they're using something I taught them. When I see them using the strategies and that's what I've always gotten the most from as a teacher is working with kids one-on-one -on -one or a few on one so that um, I can see if it's effective or not. Right now we're working on fractions. You don't inherently use a lot of touch points with fractions, but their program is such that it goes from the simplest fractions to adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing fractions, simplifying fractions, which are all hard concepts for children. I definitely would like to thank the Hamilton Community Foundation and Mr. Wilkes because I never imagined that I would even win the grant, <laughs> let alone be able to provide our school with all of these critical materials for learning math. Thank you. I first learned about Brock's Adventures through my daughter, Emma, who is a first grader. She would come home talking about Brock. So she's talked about courage, honesty, fairness, citizenship, compassion. During the story, Brock's always a character in there, and he helps another character make a choice. The good choices they can make, or what would be poor choices, how that would impact them, and how they would feel about that. Each month after Brock and Robin come in to talk to us, the kids are given a calendar to take home that has different tasks on it that they need to fill out and complete with their families. Once this um, is accomplished, at the end of the month, they bring it back in and they can be rewarded with a Brock buddy bracelet. Whenever in class someone's making a poor choice or starting to make a poor choice, all we have to say is, what would Brock want you to do? Um, is that being a good Brock buddy? And that will usually kind of help the student to remember they need to make a different choice. I can be a Brock buddy being honest. I can be a Brock buddy by being a good citizen. I can be a Brock buddy by picking up an empty bottle at the lake. I can be a good Brock buddy because I recycle. It actually started with me doing a reading program at one of the schools I worked at. I brought Brock in as a special treat for the kids. And so I brought the backpack in and put a book and a treat on each side for the kids. And if they could read the book, then they you know, got that. So my son drew me a little simple book that I could take in. I thought maybe I'll write the books about teaching the kids how to make better choices or what happens when you make choices, who it affects. The kids are gonna be hooked by this dog and that's exactly what happened. They really wanna be his buddy. So that's really what it's about. 
I'd like to thank Mr. Wilkes and the Hamilton Community Foundation for being good Brock buddies by showing good citizenship and being kind and caring to the students and the staff at Hamilton City Schools. This is my second year with Hope. I have enjoyed working with the students here. Being from Hamilton, uh, growing up in Hamilton schools, it helps me connect and make um, a solid, positive influence on people of my own community. The first trip we went to the Cincinnati Art Museum, we were able to provide them the opportunity to go down to Cincinnati. For a lot of them, it was the first time they had been to Cincinnati, especially for a positive reason. We went to the Cincinnati Art Museum. Now, there's other places that you can go to get away from bad stuff. Instead of just going there to do another bad stuff, you can go to museums or different places and learn stuff instead of doing bad stuff. We also had lunch at Mount Lookout and got to see the view of the, uh, the city and we had an art class there outdoor led by a volunteer art teacher from our local community. At Pyramid Hill we were able to look at all the different sculptures and it was neat because the students were like, this is in Hamilton? I'm like, yeah, it's right across from the, you know, the river. And they're like, we had no clue it was there. I had never been to Pyramid Hill before. It was my first time going, and it was a great experience for me. I feel like I'd go back more seeing as it is so close to home. Overall, I think my experience was really good. I feel like I look more forward to coming to school every day, knowing that I can bond with my teachers and my classmates, and knowing that we can go on field trips, and we're going on a field trip next week, and I, I just feel like it's been an amazing experience for me to be able to be a part of. And then we went to our adopter school partner, the Hamilton Dream Center. At the Hamilton Dream Center, like we believe every student deserves at least the opportunity to succeed, and so we use whatever resources we have to give them that opportunity. I believe in second chances, maybe third, fourth. As long as someone's trying, then the Hamilton Dream Center wants to help. We talked about self-portraits and what it is to be uh, true to yourself, and so she led them in the art class and they made their self-portraits, and so it was very touching to hear some of their stories, some of the students' stories, and how they tied it all together from you know, seeing things in their community to being a part of themselves, to see the look on their faces was amazing. To provide that opportunity for our culturally deprived students, I can't even put into words uh, how that made me feel to be able to provide that for them through the grant. To the Hamilton Community Foundation and to Harry T. Wilkes, the Riverview Royals say, Thank you! Just uh, wanted to say thanks for Mr. Wilkes. Deeply deeply appreciate the contributions to our community and to our school. Thank you, Mr. Wilkes. Say thank you. Say thank you. Say thank you. Yay!